now to say it forward, direct Mark Aranal. Hello, hello everyone. I will be talking about something very close to my heart. So I, I'm so excited that I was asked to talk about this topic. I'm an artist, and I'm sure many of you out there, you are an artist, whether you know it or not. You may not even be aware of it. When I was starting out, even as a young artist, okay, just to give you a little bit of a background, I've always loved performing. As young as two or three years old, I would, I, I would be thrust out to just perform in public, no? Uh, sing a song, recite a poem. I would join declamation contests, or oratorical contests. I just love being in the limelight, standing in front of a stage and just showing them what I could. I'm not saying that I was a very, very talented person, but I just love to perform. There's a certain high, okay? There's a certain uh, fulfillment when you express yourself creatively. Now, as you get older, of course, you would like your arts to have more meaning. I read books. Unfortunately, most of the books that I read are from the States. There are no books available locally that would really guide me, or at least I was not able to find one, that would really guide me into understanding the perspective of the arts. Now, I have a long time ago come to a decision where I have declared my talent belongs to God, therefore I should use it to honor Him. So that is where I am coming from, okay? I believe many of you have also come to that point where you somehow have that strong conviction or sense that your talent was given to you for an important purpose. So if that is you, then this message is exactly for you. There are seven essential elements that I found out through the years. It's education, evangelism, excellence, efficacy, edification, expansion, and finally, exaltation. Now, I don't want you to get bogged down with all the highfalutin words, okay? I will even be redefining it, and you'll see that it's not really that difficult to understand. And there are things that I hope you will be able to apply directly to whatever context you are in. But let's focus on education. Do you know that if you are an artist, whatever field of arts, you may be an actor, a singer, a visual artist, like a painter, sculptor, or even in the other things that is not considered uh, uh, art, uh, of course, creative writing, architecture, and the, the modern technology arts, such as filmmaking, graphic design. Whenever there is a creative expression of an inner artistic impulse, you are actually practicing your art. Sometimes intentionally, sometimes not. You just like to doodle on one side without understanding or realizing that you're actually doing a work of art. But many people, many artists do not understand that in my opinion, if you are an artist, you're automatically an educator. Do you know that many children learn more from watching TV than listening to their parents and maybe even from their teachers in school? The arts is such a powerful, influential tool that it teaches and molds the mind of young people. I, 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 I am blessed to have been raised in a family of educators. Both my parents were educators. And I probably spent more time reading books when I was a young kid than playing out there in the streets. In fact, when I re later on realized that my, my classmates were not able to read the books that I read, I thought they were weird, or I thought something was wrong. I assumed that everyone my age knows who Robinson Crusoe is, has read The Arabian Nights, or Swiss Family Robinson, or know Huckleberry Finn, you know, and Tom Sawyer. I thought every child knew what I knew. I grew up on the classics. I started reading Shakespeare at a very early age. Now, it's true, I'm a little bit of a nerd, <laughs> uh, but that's beside the point. The important thing is, when your heart is open to learn and hungry to learn, like I was as a kid, it brings you to a so much deeper dimension, and that is what I want to put in now. If you are an artist, you have to have a lot of messages in your heart, and you probably do, you're just not aware of it, that you should be able to bring it forward, 
okay? Just a few Bible verses I want to read to you guys. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The heart of the Bible is education. It aims to teach. It aims to show forth truth. And I believe because God is the God of the arts, He is the source of all artistry, right? I like it when somebody said that whenever you do a work of art, you're actually doing an extension of God's work. Because He is the ultimate artist, right? We all agree with that. So we are in a very privileged position as artists that whenever we express ourselves creatively, we are actually an extension of God's hand. So all those 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17, specifically talks about the Bible, about the scripture. I believe that we can also relate that to whatever field of arts. Titus 2, 1 also said, you must teach what is in accord with sound doctrine. Now, I want to quickly talk to you about something many educators already know. Hook, look, book, and took. These are certain principles that you need to understand and apply whenever you use the arts to teach. Hook, get their attention, as simple as that. Do something to, to grab the attention of the audience with all the other distractions around them. You need to get their attention. Second is look, bring them to a truth. Show them a specific truth. Third is the book, which is either the doctrine or your scientific a treatise or something, or a credible author, for example, but you need to put in credibility also to what you will teach them. So when you teach as artists, you don't just, you know, teach something out of the blue that is not well thought of. Importante pong pinag-isipan nyo yun. Importante po na ito ay malalim sa puso nyo and you're passionate about it and you, you really want to bring that truth across. And the fourth is to. What does it take for your audience now? Now that they have learned that particular truth, now that you were able to get their attention and you were able to bring them to a particular message, to listen to a particular message, it has to result in a behavioral change or a specific path of action, course of action. Otherwise, much of what we're teaching will be irrelevant and will just go down the drain. You just wasted your time and you wasted the time of your audience. There has to be a specific action. Many movies I've seen have brought me to a specific action even in my own life. God had used the arts in so many different ways. Of course, for me, because I'm a theater person, I find the most fulfillment when I watch a play. When I see something, I see a theatrical performance. It moves everything in me in different levels, emotionally, intellectually, and it always, almost always, results in a specific action for me. So, let me just wrap it up. Whether you understand it or not, if you are an artist, performing artist or other fields of art, you have an obligation to teach people the message that God had placed in your heart. And your artistry is only the medium to teach that.